After the Leonardo DiCaprio movie The Beach was released, thousands of tourists would flock to the picturesque Maya Bay each day. This caused such devastation to the natural environment that the Thai government were forced to close the island to allow for a, some regeneration. Peru introduced government mandated restrictions on visitor numbers after over tourism began to destroy the natural area and heritage at the World Heritage Site of Machu Picchu. Venice is a city with 55,000 permanent residents, yet on its busiest days, Venice receives more than double that number of tourists alone. Members of the host community are forced to navigate crowds and put up with noisy wheelie suitcases and selfie sticks on a daily basis. Furthermore, many tourists demonstrate disrespectful behaviour by swimming in the canals and dropping their litter. The boats produce pretty harmful emissions too, which are emitted into the atmosphere each day. Queues resulting from too many climbers on Mount Everest have resulted in people dying at the top of their mountain, their lives taken arguably as a direct result of over-tourism. Over-tourism is a problem, a big problem. Over-tourism is a term that we are seeing being used more and more in everyday life, from scholars and academics to industry stakeholders to the general public. But what does it actually mean? What is it all about? In today's video, I'm going to tell you exactly that. And if you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Sainton, and I'm here to teach you all about travel and tourism industry and how we can make it better. So what exactly is over-tourism? Over-tourism is the result of growing tourist numbers in a given area. It refers simply to the notion that there are too many visitors in a particular place. But how many is too many? Well, there's no clear answer to this, but there are clear indications that over-tourism is occurring. Over-tourism signs include pressures that are placed on local resources and facilities due to growth in numbers, changes in culture and loss of authenticity, the deterioration of quality of life for the host community, and feelings of irritation and annoyance due to the presence of tourists. Over-tourism is a concept that has gained traction only really in the past few years. It started off with a movement on Twitter in 2012 when the hashtag Overtourism became popular. The term was then officially coined in 2016 by Skift, who later trademarked the word Overtourism. But despite this being a new term, it's far from being a new problem. And researchers have rushed in headfirst in attempts to further conceptualise and define the notion of Overtourism. But despite this being a relatively new term, it is not a new problem. And researchers have been rushing in headfirst in attempt to conceptualise and define what exactly is over-tourism. The World Tourism Organisation define over-tourism as the impact of tourism on a destination or parts thereof that excessively influences perceived quality of life of citizens and or quality of visitor experiences in a negative way. Furthermore, the Responsible Tourism Partnership refer to over-tourism as destinations where hosts or guests, locals or visitors, feel that there are too many visitors and that the quality of life in the area or the quality of the experience has deteriorated unacceptably. It is the opposite of responsible tourism, which is about using tourism to make better places to live and better places to visit. Often, both visitors and guests experience the deterioration concurrently. Over-tourism really has come about because of the growth in the global population and the growth in the amount that we are traveling around the world. Tourist numbers have increased exponentially in recent years and the trend is set to continue. Whilst there obviously has been a slight blip, to put it mildly, due to the COVID pandemic, there is still an anticipation that there could be up to 1.8 billion international tourists worldwide by 2030. But over-tourism is not just about numbers. It is about there being too many tourists for tourism to be sustainable. There may be just a handful of tourists, but if this is too many for the host destination to comfortably accommodate, then there is a risk of over-tourism. It is difficult to accurately say whether a destination is in fact experiencing over-tourism or not, because this term is so subjective. Whilst there are examples such as Boracay in the Philippines or Machu Picchu that may be pretty clear cut, others are less obvious. And in attempts to quantify the issue of over-tourism, the people over at Responsible Travel have created an over-tourism map. 
This map is compiled from research into online mentions of overtourism around the world. Destinations mentioned are marked on the map. Whilst this does, of course, demonstrate to some point the extent of the problem, it is likely that there are many different examples that are not accounted for here. Nonetheless, it does give us a good idea. So we've established what overtourism is, but what causes it? Why does it happen? There's no one set cause for overtourism. Rather, it happens as a result of a combination of factors. Cheap flights with budget airlines to destinations has resulted in hordes of tourists arriving that previously may not have ventured there. The growth of Airbnb has seen thousands of beds suddenly becoming available in destinations around the world without being subject to any kind of planning, permits, or in some instances, taxes. And increases in disposable income, population growth, and an increased desire for society to travel further and see more of the world have all played a key role. In addition to this, there is also the media to take into consideration, along with promotional material and activities as evidenced, for example, through Insta-tourism. Over-tourism is a term that has a lot of negative connotations associated with it. And it's almost always seen as a bad thing. But why? Now, there are many typical issues that are sadly associated with over-tourism. Some examples include locals developing a, a resentment or a strong dislike, maybe even a hatred towards tourists, littering and damaging the natural environment, environmental degradation, putting increased pressure on finite and precious resources, overusing public facilities and infrastructure, causing devastating impacts on the local flora and fauna, gentrification, where local people are driven out of the area they live due to rising prices, a lack of economic control, changes to society and, and culture and authenticity, and globalization. The tourists' needs being prioritized over the local people's needs. Increases in crime, drugs, gambling, things like that. And rises in the cost of living in the area. But it's not all doom and gloom. The important thing is that we, as tourism industry stakeholders, whether we're working in the industry or whether we're just tourists, it's important that, that we try to, to minimise these negative impacts of over-tourism. But how? With careful tourism planning and management, we can limit the negative effects of over-tourism or prevent over-tourism from occurring altogether. Adoption of the principles of sustainable tourism are fundamental in managing over-tourism. From a top-down perspective, policies should be put in place to manage aspects such as overcrowding. This could include changes in fees or limitations in ticket sales, for example. From a grassroots perspective, there are many things that tourists can do to help to prevent over-tourism. Tourists can choose to visit destinations off-peak or at quiet times in the day, and to demonstrate responsible behaviour while travelling. Let me give you a quick example. For those of you who follow me on social media, you will know that I am living in China at the moment, and this summer I went to visit the Great Wall of China. There is one section that is very accessible through public transport that is really really busy every single day of the year especially on weekends and public holidays yet if you drive 30 minutes further away you can have the whole wall to yourself completely unspoiled it's actually quite remarkable and this is just one example of how places can suffer from over tourism but you can fix it you can disperse the tourists you can encourage them to go to different spots at different times through dedicated pricing or limitations on when tickets can be sold, things like this. Overtourism is a fact of life and it's generally not great, but there are good things. It does bring in money. However, what's really important is that we, we manage it well and we manage it sustainably. If you have found this video helpful, please do give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to watch this one next.